Okay, so for this project, I got to show you a lot of different things on how to, you know, get some of these clips that you want to use for your filmmaking project. Hopefully uh, you're kind of motivated and you're kind of guided in a direction that you want to go in. So I've left a lot of uh, resources down here at your fingertips that you can use for, for getting free 4K stock footage for free and that's so it's not copyrighted there's also examples of the projects like the visual poem or the motivational video that you, that you can watch and hopefully get inspired or get an idea uh, there's a mixtape down there uh, music video instructional video memories gift those they're all examples down here if you want to see those to get an idea of you know what the layout should kind of be like but first we have to understand what copyright is because if you put this out on the internet, especially if you create a YouTube account, uh, you'll be subjugated to uh, copyright laws. So if you, you can't say you get the, what is it, 2,000, 1,000 followers and the, a certain required amount of hours per month of uh, <clears throat> content watched, you still have to abide <clears throat> by the copyright laws. So the, the so what a better way to understand copyright laws is to actually break a copyright law for an under well it's not breaking a copyright law but it's actually proving for educational purposes that you can uh, borrow copyrighted content but you won't get paid for it you just have to understand that you won't get paid for it so that falls under fair use um, so this video I'm going to show you while I record this and I might comment here and there is just an example of that. Whether you're a local artist composing your own music or a massive studio filming the next blockbuster, all creators should understand how copyright, public domain, and fair use affect their work. Although these legal concepts can be somewhat confusing, we're here to break things down into easily understood language. Keep in mind that this video should not be taken as legal advice. Also, we'll be focusing on copyright in the United States. Copyright is the concept that original works, such as writing, photos, or music, belong to the people who create them, and that you cannot use, copy, modify, or publish that work without permission. If you violate copyright, it's called copyright infringement, and you may face steep consequences such as lawsuits or criminal charges. The vast majority of movies, music, books, photos, and other types of popular media are protected by copyright. Generally, those copyrights last for the lifetime of the creator, plus 70 years after their death. However, the duration of a copyright can vary due to its publication date and ever-changing copyright laws. When a work has no copyright protection, it enters the public domain. Content in the public domain can be used, modified, and published without permission or restriction. This includes all works published prior to 1923, as well as works with expired copyrights. Creators can also place their content in the public domain if they desire. Although you normally need permission to use copyrighted material in your own work, there is an exception called fair use. Fair use allows you to use brief portions of copyrighted works without permission for certain types of use, such as criticism, teaching, or news reporting. And that's where this falls However, in, teaching. However, fair use can get tricky. For instance, you may not be able to claim fair use if you use the copyrighted work for a commercial purpose or take too much of it. When in doubt, always respect the creator's copyright and use as much of your own material as possible to avoid issues. Although copyright, public domain, and fair use can seem like giant, complicated subjects, you should now have a better understanding of the basics. So hopefully you understand what kind of goes into copyright, and if uh, you have questions about, you know, feature down the road circumstances uh, if you make anything original you definitely want to protect it so with that being said I'm now going to show you how to record off of YouTube okay so to record screen record from 
uh, film more, you're gonna go up, you make sure you're in the media, and you're gonna go to record, and you're going to hit record PC screen. When you do that, this is gonna pop up right here. You wanna make sure your sound shows your headphones and your microphone uh, is hopefully the array on your lap or the array on your laptop or the ones in your headphones if you have headphones with microphones. Um, but that should be fine to record this. But you have to make sure the environment is kind of quiet because the microphone will pick up even you know you moving in your chair. So it's really important they be quiet when you record stuff from YouTube using this function. So say you want to record this, you hit the orange button and then it count it counts down. And I'll start this, you know, back probably here at the beginning. You hit play. You definitely want to move your mouse off the screen. Now say you got what you needed, you just hit pause on this and then you go back to here. Now you can either go to record PC screen, PC screen again or if you look down here, you'll probably see it. It looks like this and when you click on that, it's going to say open recorder and then you just hit stop. That's when you stop recording. So right now it's recorded 47 seconds. So I hit stop don't need this anymore <clears throat> and there it is <clears throat> excuse me right on your I guess media folder okay so it posted it right here and here's how if you would just add this to your timeline and well, you want to keep your project settings always be aware of what your project settings are so never match to media because uh, you always want to you know make sure your your project settings stay the same so when you hit play you should be able to hear it and i'll start this you know back probably here at the beginning you hit play whether you're a local artist composing Definitely your own music or a massive studio filming the next so then you hear it you know it's good but maybe you don't want all this you just want the video part so here's how you do that. You go over here, you right click on this, this layer down here on your timeline and you move it up to crop and zoom. Now you can do that and uh, here's how you crop it. You just move this right to there, move that right about to the edge and then move it over like this. Maybe you don't want something down here so you just move it up and then you hit OK. Alright, so, and then you need to figure out, okay, where do I need to trim this? Because you'll see that pops up. So you gotta figure out, okay, I need to stop it right about there. Because you can still see the remnants of the video. So you just right click and split. This is my one of my favorite tools to use when I use Filmora. I like to cut things, so wherever that orange thing is, that's where I want to cut it. And you get it right where you want it, and you can always move the timeline like this or this to you know you know zoom in on it. So you're going just at the right frame that it disappears. And then you right click, split. You don't need this part right here. So notice <clears throat> I click back and forth between the two. I click on this one, right click, delete, and now it's gone. So now when I hit play, you're a local artist composing your own music or a massive studio filming the next blockbuster. Off all creators should understand how copy. Now it's recording on two separate uh, devices. That's why the, the sound is kind of you know jarring. But say you wanted, you didn't want the video, you just wanted the sound. And now you don't like I don't know what to do. So you can always just right click and detach audio. 
what that does it puts this part in its own separate one and then you can move this one up and down independent you move it over there so now when you hit stop and play you're a local artist composing your own music one of, you can hear it you don't even need this anymore so you're just going to right click and delete this if you want to do if you know if you want to go that route <clears throat> i do not so i'm going to undo all this you can also crop and zoom now not enough people really utilize this function um if i right click and go to crop and zoom it brings me up to the crop thing and i've already cropped it but say you want to zoom in on something towards the end you know to give it more dynamic uh movement you go to pan and zoom you'll notice you got a blue one is where it starts the orange one is where it ends so at the end of this clip if i was to hit play you're a local artist composing your own music or a massive studio mouse. filming them you can see it zooms in at the end right there you're a local artist composing definitely your own music so actually that, that that gives me two things to watch out for a i need to trim off the end of this because i'm i'm literally on the filmora and you'll do that when you screen record you're going to screen record yourself going into zoomora or turning it off somehow uh, if you turn it off down here uh, by this function I don't think you will, but if you go back into record and hit screen record, because sometimes people like to do that, because the, the box is kind of hard to find. I think it's easier just to, you know, go down here in your tools, go here, and then hit, you know, open recorder and stop. But other people literally like to go back in, go to record, go to record PC screen, so this pops up. And if you do that, it's going to screen record you going into for more. I hope that all makes sense. That's kind of a convoluted explanation. But so say it stops right there so i want to cut this off that's where that orange is so i right click split don't need this anymore so click on it right click delete and then i have the zoom going from beginning to end now you can always change that go back into crop and zoom so you don't want it to be that big notice how I switched it around wherever it starts is where it starts and then you click on the orange that's how you go back and forth between the two so you can always extend this out more say you just want a slow a slow zoom in just to that I do that a lot just to create movement in some of my shots and then you hit OK and so now when I stop and hit play I'll mute this so I don't have to listen to it right click mute and then it's got a nice zoom very slow zoom you see where my that edge of that paper is it, it was just going real slow and it's very slowly moving in if you keep your mouse over it you'll notice it just kind of gets larger towards you oh I see I should have probably deleted it before then because you can see some of that or just crop it off one of the two anyways so that's how you uh, get stuff off the internet or just screen record off YouTube if you want to get a song off YouTube and want a, a higher quality version of it you need an mp3 uh, mp3 for it and a lot of people like to do this you just go to uh, YouTube so I wanted the song this is the song that I wanted to uh, record I go down here to share and then you hit copy close this and then it, it, I would use this link right here um, YouTube mp3 converter on Google Classroom you just click on that and then you paste that you hit convert now you have to be very very careful what you hit because a lot of this stuff is spam stuff and you want to stay away from that but this website seems to be pretty good. You do not want to let this show notifications know. Now, do not hit any of these because that's advertising. You want to hit download. And you'll notice another page pops up. You got some bad stuff popping up. So definitely close whatever pops up. And then you'll see it right here. You want to save it. If it's Google Chrome, it should automatically be kind of put in your downloads folder. So I'm on Internet Explorer because I have to be signed in on two different accounts. It's just lovely. But anyways, look, at, look for it in your downloads folder. 
you go to Fillmore, import, because you're in media, import media files, go to your downloads, and then you should see it. There it is right there. And I hit open. And it'll pop up, and then you can drag it down right there. So if this is muted, hit stop, hit play. And then hopefully you're... I always hit this. This is, this is your best friend. Zoom to fit all in timeline. So if I'm right here, I'm, I'm past the, four, the three, three minute mark by a good minute and a half. So I'm going to you know, use this to stop at around three. It can be a little bit over, that's fine. And then you right click, hit split. That's if your song is longer than three minutes, which probably it is. And then you're gonna delete this end part. And I'm going to zoom in on the end of this. Not too much, that's, that's a little bit much. I wanna have about 10 seconds showing. And then if I position my mouse right over that white little thing right there and get those two little triangles, I'm going to click on that and drag it this way. And that's how you fade out the song. And then if you want to go longer, you can. You can just extend that out further. Or if it's too long, shorten it up. It's totally up to you. So that's how you get songs and videos from the internet into your Filmora media uh, things right there. Now let's go back to here and make sure that I've answered every question that you could possibly have. Uh, no longer than three minutes. Must use at least four transitions. So transitions are these again. Uh, if I go back here... I bring this video in. I think I deleted. Oh, I didn't. That's right. Transition. So if I hit stop and I hit play, it's just there's no transition from the beginning. So I'm going to extend this out a little bit more and then pick out the basic. I like the basic ones the best. The dissolve is one of my favorites. The one when you find ones you like, you you're gonna hard them, and that way they'll show up at the very top they should show up uh, I like these and then favorites are right there see there's three favorites so if you find ones you, you you use a lot you'll you'll put hearts next to them and that way you can just go right to them and not have to go through all of you know the many many different kinds like these you can just go up to your favorites and oh yeah dissolve that's my standard go-to fade fade out to black i always put those on usually it ends ending of a, a video you don't normally want to put a fade to black in the middle because it kind of signifies it's the end of something so and again you'll gonna you'll you know get the hang of it and i want you to experiment with all these little uh different animations you can do to get other video clips that are copyright free you don't have to go through all that that rigmarole of recording everything through Filmora and then having to go back and edit it you can use these sites right here these are uh, free stock footage sites so if you click on them it'll take you right there and you can you know look up uh, I don't know drone footage hit enter see what they get no drone foot of course there's not maybe it's an aerial all right so I guess you have to be really specific all right these are the free ones and all you gotta do is say you like you know say you like this one that ever plays a preview of it I guess you have to hit play so if you want this you just download the video yeah that's nice it's beautiful save it um, go back here go to make sure I'm in media it tells me it's downloaded so import media files and there it is right there it open and then you can uh, blah 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 just hit yes sure why not and just drag this right there now you have this 
And then you put a transition between that. Say you want to put a, we'll do a speed blur. There we go. Hit play. So I would strongly encourage to get the copyright free versions just because they look a little bit more, I don't know, cleaner and safer, I guess. So again, use all these links. They have the Dareful, the Vedevo.net, whatever. And these even got, looks like previews like we used for the last project. So if you click on one, and just hit free download that's that's how you do it so something else you can do is uh, and I don't know if I went into this with the last project or not but you can always create multiple tracks so say you want to convey two videos showing at the same time so I'm going to choose this video of this guy standing still in a crowd I'm going to move this down right here extend this out a little bit so I can see it and then this video right here has, looks like, almost like ghost people. So if I drag that right on top, like so, move my timeline right here, you put a transition on it, who knows, hit play. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see how it went to that one before it went to that one? You can fix this one of two ways, is dissolving this one in two. But then you kind of like the way that looks, the way the people walk through them. So you can always extend this out, this transition dissolve, that's why I love dissolve. So it takes longer. And then eventually it'll go to that, that black one. That, that more darker one right here or you can turn this down a little bit because it's still coming out a lot and also I'm gonna click on this I'm on this video layer right click go to show properties and if you see the compositing one you just hit that arrow down you'll see it's got blending modes and if you select darken you'll see okay nothing really happened let's try multiply uh, something something's happening color burn now this is from me experimenting a lot the two that i like the most are lighten and screen because it shows them at the same time so it looks like screen does a little bit better job than lighten it just depends on what two pictures you choose so say i choose screen you can even turn this down a little bit if it's if it's too strong and then stop it right here hit play see what it looks like it's just another way to convey two messages at once and you can even leave this at normal and then turn this opacity down so you see them at the same time but i don't think it has the same kind of organic effect i think it looks better when you actually use the, the presets on there like lighten or screen. So that's just what I think from an artistic point of view, from you know trying to create something that's kind of has double meanings. That's something you can look into as far as you know when you texture your filmmaking, so to say. And also, I know you guys have done your digital signature everybody should have even a PNG of something that they created using Photopea of like you know whatever films or whatever your signature is so if you open that up your you know your watermark or your regular one and you can drop that on the very 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 top layer because you can always you know add stuff and just keep creating layer upon layer upon layer you know it, some of these things can be very very detailed and take a long time to render because they're very now did you see that you see how it moved like that sometimes when you delete stuff it's gonna move you know jump move some of the stuff that you've already put down which is so aggravating because then you have to go back and figure out oh god I deleted something or I I moved something in here and it pushed something else out of the way 
if that ever happens you just have to unfortunately have to go back and play some detective work that's why being a filmmaker is very uh takes a lot of critical thinking so i'm gonna delete all these because i'm just showing you how to put your watermark on so you drag your signature in and it's going to be huge right here so if you literally click on it over here you'll see this bounding box show up and then you can shorten that put that in the top right or whatever corner you like it's up to you I, for some reason I like upper right uh, and then I'm just going to extend that out to the end of the video we'll just pretend there's all kinds of videos in here so it's going to end it, you know, whatever the end of the song is. Hopefully you've trimmed yours to three minutes. I've got to probably put that back there. Now I'll pull it out. You'll learn that you always, if you're trying to extend something, it's never good to extend it this way because it always gets added onto the back, back end. So it's usually good to set your, your whatever you're uh, trying to put down layer-wise set it where you want it and then extend it or shorten it at the end you know like over here so I'll do that and then i like to put transitions on these it's a nice little dissolve in a nice little dissolve out so if we notice when i hit stop you won't see it but it'll dissolve in when i hit play and that's a good way to basically you know label your art uh, otherwise people are going to come in and steal it like i just showed you uh but hopefully it's copyright free that's the most important thing i think uh i find that a lot of times when i'm by myself uh i break out my phone and if i see something that i think oh, i could use that for a video i actually film it so there's a lot of time lapses that i've actually created so again the, the key point is to be motivated and really experiment with you know all the little stuff that you have really uh I want you to think about what you're trying to convey to the world and uh you know don't don't let your voice be silenced just because you are addicted to consuming content now maybe try to create some of your own and and uh i don't know have something to say obviously if you have any questions come up and see me and I will help you through them, but let's create something.